Hello and welcome to Current Issues with me, Tarun. India's coal demand is set to rise strongly on the back of large energy needs which are not fulfilled till now. As per the report of the working group of the 12th plan, India's coal demand is set to reach 1200 million tons by 2020. This requires a significant production scale up in quantity as well as quality. Enabling commercial coal mining would do a world of difference in achieving these targets and making the coal mining sector in India truly world class. To discuss the issue, present with me in the studio are former coal secretary Alok Party ji, uh, Upendra Kumar ji, his advisor coal SL mining and Ranjit Mehta ji, his director PhD chambers of commerce, energy, renewable energy. Okay, first I'll go across to former coal secretary Alok Party ji and would like to make him an opening. What opening comment would you make on the issue that we have taken up today? Well, the 12th uh, five-year plan document uh, does say that you need about 980 million tons of coal by the year 1617, yes. which includes power, steel, cement, all sectors. And as you said, by another two, three years, the demand would go to about 1200 million tons. Uh, it is a challenge for the country to make that much of coal available to the industry, whether it's power or whether it's a steel or any other. Uh, we have seen uh, some improvement in terms of the production done by Coal India in the recent last uh, couple of years. That has uh, built up uh, a certain degree of confidence in the, in the power sector particularly. Uh, but <coughs> the issue today you are talking about is that is commercial mining going to be the answer to many of the problems? Well, <coughs> as you all know that uh, the, the law was amended last in 2014 to bring in uh, auctioning of coal mines or coal blocks as they call it. Uh, the first amendment to allow private sector to get into coal mining was in 1993. Yes. But that was, uh, had, had a little uh, condition that uh, the mines would normally be given to yes. Uh, only end users and not not for commercial purposes yes. but the new law that came in in 2014 has a clause which allows commercial mining okay but on but as of date the government has not ventured to invoke those clauses of the law yes but have again resorted to giving or auctioning of coal mines for end use purposes and the end uses they've divided the two into two general uh, categories, yes. one is power and the other and is so-called non-power but which actually contains also a All part of power so which is… Uh, uh, you think now uh, Patiji is saying that there is an option to go full commercial if the government so decides to do it in the coming months. Uh, I will go across to Upendra Kumarji and ask him, sir, uh, what do you think, has the time come? that we allow full-scale commercial mining to make the industry world-class and also allow the best practices and technology to pour in from all over the world? See, commercial mining is the norm all over the world. And from that angle, it will be desirable that commercial mining comes in, in our country as well. But we have to look at the totality of the situation. Uh, you see, I mean, uh, when you talk to of ca captive mining, yes. apart from the restriction that you can't sell the coal, even the captive mine block owners had all the liberties yes. for modernizing the systems, for uh, getting the best uh, managerial talent, for introducing the best technologies, but nothing happened. Yes. You see, like say, 11th plan terminal year, the captive mines were supposed to contribute 335 million tons. Yes. They contributed how much? 35. Yes. You see, all the, all the blame that was thrust upon Coal India, that Coal India is standing in the way of country's progress. I mean, it happened because of something else. You see, Coal India's mandate got, got diluted once the blocks were taken away from them for captive mining. It's captive mining sector which failed the country. Yes. And then the blame came on Coal India. Yes. Now, we must analyze the reasons why captive mining sector failed. Yes. And unless those reasons are taken care of and they are effectively addressed, just by introducing uh, the, the concept of commercial mining, 
I don't think it will change the situation. So, uh, I've taken your point. I'm going to Ranjit Mehta ji of PhD at this point. Ranjit Mehta ji, how do you unleash the full potential of commercial coal mining in India? You see, uh, commercial coal mining in India is the need of our. We, when you take the example of the uh, telecom sector, once it was open for the private players, how you know the rates have come down and how the sector has grown. So, I mean, if we have to grow, I mean, today if you see the coal India is has done a fabulous job in last uh, two years. In 2014-15, coal India for the first time has produced 32 millions of uh, tons of coal which is a record and I mean it's this kind of a sharp steep we have never seen in last uh, you know 40 years. So the government has uh, streamlined many uh, many things in fact after the bill has come into force in 2014 for mining uh, for this uh, change uh, uh, for, for the for bringing the private players and foreign players in, in this sector. To really address that what we have to do is first of all we have to uh, make the you know ease of doing business better in this sector. There are many issues. There are many issues such as land acquisition, like transport infrastructure. These things are still you know not addressed. If you see like today for any player who wants to enter into this business, they have to take at least uh, you know clearances from around 15 agencies. So I mean these kind of uh, if you know we can remove these hurdles. And especially, uh, you know, land acquisition, as you know, that land acquisition bill is, is still held up in the parliament. Okay. So, I, so you're making a larger until point. Until and unless the uh, land acquisition. It, it's, it's not only commercial uh, you know, coal mining, addressed. but also land acquisition. I get your point. I'm going to Alok Partiji at this point. Sir, uh, would like to know of from course. you. Of course. Yeah. Uh, would like to know from you uh, the largest, uh, 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 the drag line, as you say, 43 CUM which is used in coal mining is used by the private sector company in India and not Coal India Limited. So when you see of the world best practices of the best machinery equipment, we say that private companies do invest and bring in world class standards. Do you think it will bring in competition and improve the sector as a whole as we open up commercial mining to a level where anybody can mine coal and sell coal and restrictions which were there on how much you can produce or whether you can sell or not or for example the coal mines conservation and development act 1974 which gives the powers to the state to regulate coal production and prevent sale of coal so all these we should should we break through the shackles now has time come to unleash the potential of the industry well i think uh, let's look at the current situation i think that will give the answer yes uh, first of all i would say that to uh, think in terms of coal uh, blocks being allotted or in any method whether it's auctioned or whatever to end users yes. is something which is not done anywhere in the world so that's a significant point sir you're making and in the uh, it is a fact that uh, it, it is no it, it's not uh, logical or even rational yes to think in terms of uh, trying to model mines to suit Some an end, end use yes in fact, all over the world, the mines are mined by miners and the ore is sold off to the end user in any quantity that he wants to different, different people. Now, we have really uh, gone into a situation where we have kind of discarded that kind of logical and rational approach. Yes. But gone into saying that we would like to have an end user and therefore we should model. Now, you can't really a model a natural resource to suit your artificially created uh, um, power plant or a, yes. a, a, or a mine yes. or a, a steel yes. plant. Now in that situation I think logically one would like to say that yes commercial mining is a very good answer. Yes. But let's look at it the way the, the, the whole situation is today. Has the auctioning of coal mines for the end users been a very successful uh, venture. Yes. From the last auctioning that was done, it seems that there is a sense of failure. Yes. That it has failed to create that kind of enthusiasm in the, the end users yes. to be able to get the coal. Now the issue is that if you open the mine uh, for commercial mining or mines, coal mines, 
are there is there a promise to bring in technology yes and that is the moot question whether we can uh, mine coal better the the uh, parameters of uh, per uh, man manpower that is yes. uh, there is improved yes whether the machines that are brought in are the modern ones and we are able to curtail a lot of accidents that yes. happen we are able to raise the production all those issues yes if you ask me the world we are using technology in modern technologies in all over the world yes. and they are available yes there is no need to reinvent the wheel to find out what modern has to be done it's a matter of getting the technology and using it the point here is that when you use technology you will have costs yes and if we go by what we see in other parts of the world where modern technology is used yes the costs are likely higher than what we are doing today in coal okay. india yes the reason being that labor in india is cheap labor and is coal cheap. india is using outsourcing rather 60% of work of coal india is outsourced yes and they are all i wouldn't say that they are the the real top of the modern methods of mining yes they are using conventional methods they are midway they use machines but not the best ones yes and it is very difficult to enforce also while coal india i must give them credit has been trying to enforce has been trying so that's yes. a very yes. significant coming from uh, comment coming from alok party i'm going to upendra kumar ji yes. at this point uh you heard what alok party ji said how wh how do you look at this whole thing you see you raise the issue of uh, the biggest drag line being utilized yes by private sector yes you see the size of the drag line is not determined by what you wish to utilize right it depends upon the geological conditions yes you see coal india introduced drag lines way back in 1960 yes so it's not that it it is something new has been done yes could the geological conditions demanded a yes. bigger size of the drag line so bigger size of the drag line have been deployed yes so you see i mean let's not take it this way yes. that just because private sector has come that's why these drag lines have been if that property would have been mined by coal india yes probably the same thing would have been followed okay yeah the property is different the geology is different yes so that is the one issue now as as uh, mr parthi has rightly said uh you see i mean if you try to tailor your uh, uh de mining system to the demand yes. it becomes difficult is it in uh, uh, in commercial mining uh, by all means you go for it but uh, let us examine i mean what are the pitfalls a yes. commercial mining size has got to be a minimum size yes. to make it economically viable okay now do we have so many coal blocks which can be offered for commercial mining okay and they can sustain that level of production yes second thing there is infrastructure now if you ask a stand alone miner to construct a railway siding of 60 kilometers yes the mine can never become viable okay okay so so, so this uh, infrastructure has to be developed by the government by by by, by, by the country uh, maybe by any source of financing like now the financing is being done by coal india yes yeah and uh, so that's that uh, infrastructure development has to take place yes. and make the coal field ready for for private miner commercial miner coming in in then only it can move ahead okay yeah okay so i'm uh, going to uh, uh, ranjit uh, uh, ji from uh, phd uh, sir if you could tell me uh, do you think like private sector has now invested thousands of crores in coal mining but it was an end used waste mining as permitted now the government itself has realized that time has come to allow commercial coal mining to happen and it may happen if not this year next year what kind of benefits do you see after indian companies or multinationals are allowed to come and mine uh, in india you see uh, in fact you know commercial uh, coal mining is a very good idea this has to happen because until and unless this happens we cannot have the kind of uh, production we really need as by uh, though i mean coal india has already said that by 2020 i mean they, we are going to have a, a production of 1.5 billion tons so to achieve that i mean we have to give it to the private uh, players also but the very big question is the transport infrastructure that as it was uh, you know pointed out by my very previous speaker also the point is this another point is like say many of the power plants who need the coal they are in the western and northern sector of the country 
and most of the coal mines are in eastern sector. So there is a big gap. I mean, until and unless we really, you know, fill up this transport uh, infrastructure gap. I mean, today most of the, you know, coal is transported by trucks. So that's also, you know, the cost of uh, transportation is very high. Okay. If the private uh, uh, players have to come, the government has to basically give the infrastructure. They have to make the infrastructure ready so that, you know, uh, so that, you know, even if they get the coal, first of all, there is land acquisition. There is a resett res resettlement issue. The resettlement issue of the people who are to be displaced from those uh, places, that is also to be lo looked after. So there are many issues. The whole, you know, uh, the system right now is not very smooth. So Ranjit private Tataji, sector one question I would like to give like to a supplementary to until this. Until unless we have a proper infrastructure. Okay, the, the question is, since you spoke of coal production yes. and after that I am coming to Alok Partiji, he wanted to make a point. Uh, the thing is that despite having bumper production in Coal India Limited, Indian yes. companies are still importing coal from abroad and that is the truth. This is happening because Coal India is not supplying the full Absolutely. quota of annual contract quantity which was promised to these companies. So the, the, the quantity of the annual contract quantity would be 80% and they are still being supplied between 65 to 66%. So that change has not happened. And mind, this has to be kept in mind that this provision was retrospectively changed in 2013 where companies were told that, okay, we have promised, promised you 80%, but now we are only giving you 65% as production at Coal India Limited is less. Now, even after the production, even after the production has increased, still they are getting less. So, do you think this also calls for private sector participation to argument the supply, nothing else, in addition to bringing in technology and so on and so forth, other reasons also? Can I, can I come in here or would you uh, like? Yeah, you see why private sector is still importing the coal from uh, abroad is, yes. number one, the quality of uh, coal in our country. Yes. The quality of coal in our country is not uh, very good. It has got a lot of moisture. Yes. And no. secondly, the second biggest question is no to get the coal from the mines to the actual power stations. So the distance is too much. Okay, I so mean, I take you your points. To, I'm going you know, to Alok Bhattiji uh, at this moment. He trucks. wanted to come in, so Ranjit ji. transportation cost really goes yes. very high. Yes, Alok Bhattiji, what point do you want to make? Yeah. The point I wanted to make is that we all have been talking about, um, you know, s supporting the cause of commercial mining. Yes. And uh, way back in the last NDA government, which was in Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee's time, a bill was introduced in the parliament uh, seeking change in the law for commercial mining, but unfortunately that law did not see the, did not surface, didn't get passed. And ultimately we in 2014. Okay. What we forget uh, when we talk of various things, Mr. Kumar has said, my friend from PhD also talks, is talking of local conditions. Yes. They are saying that you need a good infrastructure, you need to ensure evacuation takes place, you need to facilitate land acquisition, you need to ensure that uh, uh, that yes. that it doesn't become unviable. Yes. But let me tell you one thing that you should not forget what is happening in the world around you. Yes. The prices of coal are falling. And it is just only recently that we found some steadiness in that. Yes. It has taken virtually uh, the path along which the petroleum, uh, the crude prices go. Yes. We, we go almost along with that. Uh, the reason being that in the U.S. there is surplus coal. The U.S. government is trying to say reduce use of coal. The Chinese are trying to shift and making coal available. So if coal is available in large quantities in trade, in the world trade, then the prices are going to fall. But sir, is this the reason Indian companies are important or because CIL is not able to meet the annual no. contract quantity? No, the, the, the reasons are quite there. Let me just explain a little bit if you give me two minutes. Yes, yes. Uh, the reason are several. One is that for power plants on the coastal region, they had been told that they will get 70% of coal from Coal India and 30% okay. has to be imported. Okay. So they designed the boilers to import high quality 30% coal oh. to blend it. Okay. Now you have to supply that high quality coal if you want them to use it. Yes. That high quality coal is highly priced in Coal India. Yes. 
And today, if you have to move it, which unfortunately the Indian uh, uh, transport system seems to be the costliest in the world. Yes. It far exceeds the price which the person has to pay if he so has sir, to. Are you are you alluding that it is cheaper to import in that case? And certain locations, yes, okay. high quality coal is cheaper to import. Okay. And that is one reason why they are using that coal okay. to blend. Th that's a very important point, that's sir. I'm going to Pendra <coughs> Kumarji to take his reaction on the very point you and made. Yeah. <laughs> sir, sir, I would I want think to it's ask absolutely you. Correct. Uh, to I mean, uh, India is sitting on such huge reserves of coal, and if we have to import, despite having the production, don't you think? It is something that we all no, no, but you I, I has explained the position. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, import is for different reasons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now you see, coal India has surplus coal. You know that. Yes. All the power stations are flush with coal. The stocks have mounted to close to 60 million tons. So all that has happened, and yet import is necessary. Like Mr. Pati said, you see, the boiler has been designed that way. Now coal India are also themselves thinking that 30 percent of imported coal that they are getting from outside, yes. they want to supply that coal from coal India's mines. Okay. But then the problem will be a price. Yes. You see, they have to bring the price of superior grade coal at, at uh, par with the imported coal prices for the similar grade. Okay. And, and because you see, transport cost is very, very high. I mean, Coal India should be, uh, it should uh, supply at the price which is at least lesser than what the imported coal of similar quality costs. Cost at destination. Certainly. Yes. Not the pithead price. Okay. Pithead price is in okay. India okay. cheaper. I, I see Ranjit Mehta also wanted to, Ranjit Mehta ji, very important point made by both the panelists that even which you said that imported coal of similar quantity is cheaper than coal India limited coal. Don't you think this is something that a lot of people in the industry as large can be surprised at that imported coal of similar quantity is cheaper than our coal India limited coal. You see at, I at mean, destination. Yeah yes. of course. Yes. Yes, Ranjit. See, there is no surprise as such. Let yes. me tell you, like today in India, if you see the productivity, the, if you see the productivity, so productivity uh, in India uh, per person per year is around 1100 tons of coal. But when you see in other parts of the world, it goes up to 36,000 tons per year per person. Okay. So the difference is here. I mean, why? Because we are digging up to 300 uh, meters. And secondly, we don't have the best of the technology. Thirdly, as the transportation cost, because most of the coal right now, even it is being transported by the trucks. Yes. So by road, the transport is very expensive. So, Mehta ji, so one more point I want to make since we talk of productivity. The, uh, you know, train. I'll so read out is, a small statistic to you. You can react and then I'll go to my yeah. other panelists. Uh, employee output per man shift is low in Coal India Limited's underground yes. mines at 0 0.76 tons per man shift. I now compare it with underground mines in United States of America. It is 22.35 tons per man shift. There is no comparison here. If you're talking of something like more than 25 times, what do you Absolutely. think of this? This, I mean, this completely, yeah, there is no this completely yeah, exposes there is, us on the no. inefficiency but, part. Let, no. Mr. Then, let us I, also I think remember. This should not be interpreted in yeah. that way. Okay, let but say, uh, say. Okay, so let me tell you. I mean, the point is, we way. don't have the best of technology all over no. the world. People are using the we latest are. technology. Okay, in both this, Ranjit ji, uh, both panelists want to come in here on this. Okay, okay, okay. Look, but ji, you can invention in terms of technology. Yes, so it is very important that we get the best of the technology. You see, then only our people. Can, you know, okay, okay, sir, I have taken your so point. I am going to Alok Parti ji and then coming to Upendra Kumar ji. Yes, Alok Parti ji. When we you? talk of the mines in the US, yes. let us understand the geology of those mines. Yes. The geology of those mines allow you to use the best technology, which okay. is developed for those mines. Okay. When we talk of Indian mines, underground mines, they don't have those kind, that, that geology doesn't exist. Okay. We have tried using uh, the long wall machines, which are the most uh, advanced and things like that. Okay. And long wall machines, highly mechanized, you have one man doing all the work. Okay. Whereas in Indian mine, when you are using, doing things manually, and we are not uh, being able to employ long wall because of the geology, we can mechanize it to a certain extent. Okay. okay. And therefore, the manpower output so will always time, be very. What would be a closing yeah. comment for this discussion today? Uh, I would say that uh, there is no uh, way out other than going in for commercial mining. Yes. Because let's take the fact yes. on board yes. that the kind of auctioning that we have done uh, for end use mining yes. is heading to a kind of a failure. Okay. 
therefore but the but the but to be able to make commercial mining attractive yes. and attract talent from all over the world where the best technologies can be used to be for better and uh, and and higher outputs yes it's necessary first of all to make it attractive yes to attract the best best companies to attract the best companies, companies. i take your take away as yes. that attracting best companies and doing commercial and mining opening it up uh, i'm going to you pender kumar ji what would be your closing comment quickly on this discussion um, if you permit me another half a minute yes you see this uh, underground productivity we being talked about yes let us remember underground mines in india okay. contribute only 8% of total production okay so because underground productivity is low yes. that is no reason yes. that our cost is very high right you see now let us understand also another thing yes you see cost of production remains the same irrespective of the quality okay it's not that the because the quality is higher yes. the cost of production goes up yes it's only the sale price that has been fixed taking into account yes. the better quality yes so you see i mean let's not confuse between yes. the two yes and what would be your closing comment Closing comment: I entirely agree with Mr. Prati yes. that commercial mining, uh, this the norm all over the world. Yes. We have to so adopt it, move towards but it. we must create conditions must create so that the same failure that we are coming across in yes. case of captive mining, same thing should not okay. get. Okay, conditions repeated. should be created before we move ahead, and we should move towards commercial mining. Uh, Ranjit ji, Mehta ji, what would be your final closing comment in ten seconds, please? We are totally out of time on this one. yeah you see india has the world's fifth largest coal uh, coal reserve so we have to really extra extract it yes. the only point that we can do is by attracting the private players and they'll come once they really get the incentive yes. and for that i mean i would say that technologies are available whether it is underground or what all yes. the technologies are available in terms of mining only thing is we will have to get the best of the technology and the best practices from all over the world so that all these mines will be viable Okay. And so that we can attract maximum investment. Okay, I take your point, sir. For attracting in investment yeah, and also ensuring so world-class production standards, employment for, we have uh, to go towards commercial mining, as all my panelists in concur. And employment again. also, employment, employment generation also. for the people around. Okay, thank you, gentlemen, for joining on our dis yeah. discussion today on coal, commercial coal mining. So as we see, as India moves quickly towards commercial coal mining, time has come to open the sector full scale and unleash the potential of the industry. for attaining not only world class production standards but also increase in output put to meet the industry demand thank you so much for joining us on this discussion today thank you